Hi there, in this video I'm going to be taking a quick look at Merkur's Deros sander and explaining why it's the only sander I've actually bought and returned. It's coming up next. And welcome back. So yes, the Merkur Deros has a special place in my workshop, not because I'm a huge fan, but because it's the only sander, possibly the only tool actually, that I've bought and returned. You know there's an old saying that goes something like you don't try using new tools or new techniques on a job. Well, when I got my Deros, I was working flat out. There was nothing but jobs. So I dived right in with it and just didn't get along with it. In particular, I didn't get along with this little flappy paddle switch. It is purely a personal thing. I just don't get on with it. I'm used to triggers that you can lock and leave and just everything about it from having to remember to switch it off before flipping it over to change discs to having to remember to plug it in even, no plug it cord on this of course, meant that it just wasn't for me. So I returned it and maybe I could have persevered with it, but I don't buy tools for fun. They have to earn their keep from day one and it just wasn't working for me. That's why I was particularly keen when I was approached by Merca earlier in the year to see if I'd be interested in taking a look at a de uh, another Deros. And I said yes, absolutely, but... And we had a bit of a conversation about my initial experiences with it. And then the whole Covid thing happened and everything was just sort of put on hold. Now, in the meantime, my pal Leo over at the Handicraft channel put out a video about his year with his Merca Deros and why he'd moved on. I offered to buy the Deros from Leo, but instead he's very generously lent it to me so that I can take a look and it's his, uh, Leo's Deros that we have here. Now, I've got a couple of doors to sand here, so I'm gonna get on with that while I give you a little bit of background. The Merkur Deros was launched in 2012 as an upgrade to the Ceros sander. The Ceros was a little smaller in the hand because it had an external power supply about the size of a breeze block, but that was all shrunk down inside for the Deros. The Deros keeps the brushless DC motor, which is powerful and smooth in operation, starts and stops quickly, and the speed can be varied either by buttons on the back of the speed controller or on the fly by varying the pressure on the paddle. The power cord is removable, but while it looks similar to the standard locking IEC C13 or kettle lead, it's a proprietary Merca part. Now, one of the really clever things that I particularly like about this version of the Deros is that it comes with both 6 inch or 150 mil and 5 inch or 125 mil pads, and those pads are freely interchangeable. I wonder why other makers don't do this. Well, now this is huge for me anyway. If Merca had offered this way back when I had mine, I may well have persevered with it because it means that you can finally get a 5 inch 125 mil sander with a 5 mil stroke, a coarser, more aggressive stroke. I really like sanders with 5 mil strokes, but for some reason all manufacturers seem to see 5 inch sanders as finishing sanders. Make no mistake, they're fantastic for denibbing between coats of paint, but you wouldn't want to try and strip a finish with them or do initial prep work. Now this version of the Deros is quite an outlay at around £380 including VAT, but that's pretty competitive with the likes of Festool Sanders, my go-to random orbital, the old brushed ETS-155 is around £300, and the new brushless ETS EC155 is about 480. We seem to be moving from outlay to investment at that level. And remember, that's just for a 6 inch 150 mil sander, no 5 inch option with those two Festool sanders. One thing the current Deros does have is a Bluetooth connection which you can use to connect to the My Merca app on your smartphone. But unfortunately, other than registering for the non-transferable extended warranty, getting the manual and seeing speed and vibration levels, you don't seem to be able to do much else with it. You can pay an extra $4.99 via in-app purchases to get access to your daily vibration exposure, or an eye-watering £110 if you wanted to be able to set the maximum runtime and RPM on the tool. Honestly, I think there's been a bit of a missed opportunity here as I'd much rather have some kind of security measure built around this Bluetooth connection. Maybe if the tool had to be within Bluetooth range of your phone to work, there'd be a little bit less of a target. I think something like that would be very valuable to guys in the trade whose gear is their livelihood. As it is, it just made me feel like part of a herd that was there to be milked. 
So would I recommend this sander? That's a really tough one. There's no denying it is an absolutely lovely sander. It feels great in the hand. The ergonomics are fantastic. The dust collection is excellent and it makes my old Festool 155 seem top heavy and ungainly in comparison. And I'm even coming to terms with the flappy paddle, but in all honesty, I'm not sorry that I returned the one I had, simply because I know too many people who've had a few issues with these. And as I saw posted on a forum not so long ago, a fantastic sander while it's working isn't really the best of recommendations. Now I know this is just anecdotal and there'll be many Merca fans typing angrily in the comments about how it's the best sander they've ever owned and it's never missed a beat in however many years of use. My old pal Alistair Johnson at Freebird Interiors basically ran an early Ceros into the ground and replaced it immediately with a Duros which is working fine for him and I'm really pleased that it is but at the same time Leo from Handicraft had this sander repaired twice in six months of very light use. And the same goes for Matt Smith over at Badger Workshop. He got eight months of use out of his before it had to be repaired. And Keith Brown at Rag and Bone Brown also had issues with his and went so far as to call it out as the tool he most regretted buying. I also know a lot of folks who've had speed controller and motor issues in particular. And back when I was first chatting with Merca about getting a loaner, I asked if they were aware of the issue and this is the response they gave. The reason for the failure of speed controllers in general is due to excessive vibration and overheating from a worn backing pad. A backing pad is like the tyres on a car and needs to be monitored and replaced when appropriate to ensure the tool performs at an optimal level. Now that's the reason they gave them fair enough. I don't really see myself how a worn backing pad can create so much stress to the speed controller where it makes it overheat. We're talking about general wear and tear to the Velcro here, obviously not taking chunks out of the edge of it. Uh, and I assume that the backing pads are manufactured to be balanced for the sander. And certainly the backing pads that I've got on my old Festool sander here, I change them when the uh, discs, when the Velcro gets so worn on the discs that they don't stick there anymore and then they turn them into hand sanding pads like these. I made a video about that. They certainly don't cause any issues with the motor on this sander from uh, 2007. Same pair of brushes on this by the way and a total of only two new pads, so three pads in total. Also the question that springs to my mind is that if the backing pad is the cause of the speed controller failure then why was this one returned to Leo with the original pad on it? That's like treating the symptoms, the speed controller, but not curing the disease, the cause of the issue. Uh, maybe it's different for brushless DC motors. I don't know, I'm no expert, and this has only been the most brief of overviews of the Merca Deros sander. It is kind of heartbreaking though to find a sander, the sander of my dreams, to be honest, a five inch random orbital with a five mil stroke, and yet have this uncertainty hanging over it. I don't know what the answer is, Perhaps you can tell me if you've got a Mercadiros and it's working flawlessly for you and has done for years, then let me know about it in the comments down below. Or if you've had one of these with any of these kind of issues, then let me know in the comments as well, especially if you had them resolved satisfactorily. Or if you know of any other uh, random orbital sander that has a 5-inch pad and a 5mm stroke, I would love to hear about that. Uh, that's it for this week, though. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more weekly workshop videos or come and join the Patreon party for additional exclusive content at patreon.com forward slash 10 minute workshop. And I'd like to take a second just to thank everybody who does just that. That's it for this week, though. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.